In this video, I'll be answering your questions about multiple sclerosis off the internet. Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I'll be answering your internet questions about multiple sclerosis. So grab pen and paper, and let's jump in. Suzanne Brown asks an outstanding question. Why does perimenopause or menopause seem to have such an effect on MS in older women? Changes in hormones? The short answer is yes, it does have to do with changes in hormones. When a woman starts to have their estrogen and progesterone levels fall, say around early 40s, and when they stop having menstrual cycles, say mid 50s, we find that it does have an impact on MS disease. Specifically, we can see an increase in several unpleasant symptoms. Things like worsening anxiety, depression, worsening fatigue, worsening sleep quality, difficulty with bowel, bladder, and bedroom, hot flashes, amongst other things. But most disturbing, when women enter menopause, it speeds up their disease process. Many people who follow the channel are familiar with the fact that men progress faster in disability compared to women. But that phenomenon is only true until a woman enters menopause, at which point her progression of disability is the same as that of a gentleman. This is the reason that I think it's a best practice to talk to your obstetrician gynecologist about going on hormone replacement therapy. Estrogen only, topical hormone replacement therapy can help combat this, and I think it's worth a conversation with your ob -GYN. Erica asks, hello from Ontario. Does magnesium actually help with spasticity management or is it a placebo effect? Well, Erica, magnesium does in fact help with spasticity. I use magnesium frequently in my clinic to help one of three things. It can help with spasms, cramps, and charley horses. It can help with constipation and it can also help with sleep. Typically, I'm shooting for about 400 milligrams once to twice a day. Great question. Joshua asks, hey doc, my neurologist is against cannabis to help with MS. He says that pot will hurt my cognitive function. Has there been enough studies to support his opinion? Joshua, he's right. Marijuana or medical cannabis can help with many MS symptoms, and I use it in my clinic to combat spasticity, neuropathic pain, insomnia, and anxiety. But it can worsen cognition, and it does not treat depression, balance, or bladder dysfunction. Everything as it relates to medical cannabis, like any other medication, is a risk benefit. And your neurologist is not wrong with that concern. Kevin asks, is NFL only caused by MS or other demyelinating diseases? Kevin, the answer is no. Neurofilament light, which can be measured in the spinal fluid or the blood, goes up whenever there is damage to the brain. If you have a brain tumor, if you have a traumatic brain injury, if you have a stroke or if you have multiple sclerosis, which is active, NFL will go up. So when NFL goes up, it's bad, but it does not tell you why it's bad. Excellent question. Susan Roper asks, is it okay to travel long haul flights after taking Ocrevus? Susan, ostensibly the answer is yes. I do not think that you need to shelter at home just because you've received Ocrevus. As a best practice, I like to check laboratories in my patients where I will look at their IgG level and I will look at their absolute lymphocyte count, their ALC. And if both of those numbers are above 600, I'm feeling pretty good. If my patient isn't having recurrent infections, I'm feeling pretty good. And as a best practice, I would throw a mask on when you're traveling. But I don't think that you need to stay at home and I certainly don't want you to miss out on long flights to exotic places. Dominic asks, is Ocrevus still the only drug against PPMS? Well, Dominic, I make this video in September 2024. And as of today, the only FDA approved drug to treat primary progressive MS is still Ocrevus. Does that mean it's the only drug that should work? No. In my opinion, any B cell depleting agent should technically work. And there are weird off-label situations where we might use other drugs like rituximab, we might use Kesempta, we might use Briumv, and there's even times when I may consider using something like Mavenclad. But if you're going by the book today, the only FDA-approved drug remains Ocrevus. 
If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Do me a kind favor, and if you haven't already given the video a like, click that button. Oh yeah. It teaches the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and helps push it out so more families impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. Jesse B asks, speech changes in MS? Can you have spasticity affecting the tongue? Jesse, the answer is yes. The fancy neurology word for speech problems is dysarthria. And unfortunately, in the setting of MS, dysarthria is not uncommon. It turns out there are several different kinds of dysarthria. And espastic dysarthria is amongst the most common in the setting of MS. But there's some good news. Get ye to the speech pathologist. A speech pathologist can help you in improving your enunciation so that people can better understand you. Excellent question. Margaret asks, is it reasonable to stop MS drugs after age 65? Margaret, my personal opinion is absolutely not. If you have neurological features or functions that you're very fond of, for example, seeing, hearing, smelling, having an orgasm, wingling your fingers, I want you to preserve the reserve and maintain those neurological functions. And if you have an autoimmune condition which risks attacking those functions, I want to protect you against that by continuing disease-modifying therapy. Now, everything is a risk-benefit, and it is reasonable to talk to your neurologist about your specific situation and the risk-benefit of staying on medicine for you. But as a general rule, I would never ever stop a medicine just because you happen to celebrate your 65th birthday. Great question. Nadia asks, how much does sugar impact MS? Now, Nadia, whereas I don't think that sugar speeds up the disease, I absolutely think that sugar worsens many, many MS symptoms. I personally consider sugar to be a poison, and I strongly recommend removing it from your diet. And if you don't believe me, I double dog dare you to try removing sugar-laden foods from your diet for a month, and you will be shocked at the differences that you find. Typically, when patients take me up on this challenge, they find that fatigue drops, depression drops, cognition goes up. It's really remarkable. Best of luck. I hope you take my challenge. Dory asks, any good news about supplements instead of Adderall or Ritalin? Dr. Google says yes, but you can't believe him. Well, Dory, that is a great question. Fatigue is unfortunately the most common symptom in the setting of MS. And it's true that oftentimes we turn to pharmaceuticals like Adderall or Ritalin, which are amphetamine salts, or other medicines like Provigil or Nuvigil to trick the brain into being more awake. But those aren't the only options. I have found that removing sugar from your diet, increasing your vitamin D, increasing your water game, and supplements such as levocarnitine one gram twice a day can be very, very helpful. I also sometimes find that taking a B-complex can be helpful. Now, I'm not recommending, Dory, that you run out to the pharmacy and buy those and start taking them. I do think it's worth a conversation with your neurologist. There you have it, folks. 21 quick rapid-fire questions and answers, dragnet style, just the facts. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to continue to up your game and learn how to live your best life despite having MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.